Welcome to E3. Christians fear a lot, which ought not to be so. Because the Bible says, in nothing be terrified by the adversary, which is to them evidence talking of defeat, but to your salvation and of God. So the believer is not supposed to be afraid. But the believer is always afraid. I don't blame some of you. Since some of us were born, you know, somebody was questioning, why is it that Africans don't plan long? We don't plan long term. I say, yes, Africans cannot plan long term because when we are born in our churches, we, they started telling us that the whole village is against us. There are demons that are pursuing us who don't want us to prosper. When the whole world is trying to kill you, what are you trying to do? All you are trying to do is survive. So when you are trying to survive, how can you plan 20 years from now? So our thought process is limited because of fear. And I've said numerous times that fear stultifies creativity. It stultifies growth. And it stultifies progress. You can never make progress when you are afraid. You can never make progress when you are afraid. So the believer is not supposed to be afraid. The believer is as bold as a lion. We are not supposed to be afraid. We are supposed to deal with our fears. You know, I've had the privilege of raising a lion and I have seen how lions behave. When I was in the zoo, I, I had a, a young lion that I was trying to domesticate. And there was a day, a very young lion, I used to play with it, carry it, play with it, do all manner of fun. It was so much fun, you know. It made me feel like a hero then, you know. When The two things that really made me feel good when I was still a zoologist, before I became a banker, was keeping of snakes and keeping of lions. Because an average human being fears snake, right? And an average human being is awed by lions. So imagine me carrying a snake and feeling good, like a live snake, and the snake is slithering around, even in my hands. I become like a hero in the eyes of those who are looking at me. It always made me feel good. There was a day we exposed a young lion before the, the donkeys. We, of course, I was playing with the lions, and all of a sudden, three donkeys came. You know, in the animal kingdom, the lion is recognized. Praise God. I say in the animal kingdom, the lion is recognized. It does not need introduction. In fact, if a very simple analogy, you know, abroad, people who have problems with cats visiting their compound and animals that are unwanted, you know what they do? Just take a mark of a lion. A mark is the dusting of the lion's skin. Dust the lion's skin, the mark. Spread it in your garden. Animals will avoid there because the smell of a lion is terrifying to animals in the suborder in the food chain. So we are exposed this young lion to three donkeys, adult donkeys. You know what the lion did? The lion bent down to the ground and a, a small lion that if a donkey gives it a kick, it could kill it. But you know what this small lion did? It bent his head to the ground and did like this. And put his head you know, the donkeys, they all came like they with their three heads together. This young lion put his head, head on with the donkeys. So I said, look at this small boy. So I now quickly ran and picked, picked the lion off. A lion is bold. Is bold. That's the hallmark of a lion. And the Bible says that believers are as bold as a what? If you are afraid of a cockroach, are you as bold as a lion? <laughs> I don't know why I said it where I said it. Oh, it was not deliberate. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. A lot of believers have become enslaved. You hear the crying of the cats in your window at night. You start having, you declare seven days of fasting. Because a cat cried at your window. 
You wake up in the night and you hear owls hooting like I did last night. A lot of owls were hooting and it always excites me when I hear those the hooting of, a, of an owl. You declare seven days fasting. Praise God. I know what I'm saying because I've experienced it. You carry olive oil. Cats cried in your company. You heard cats crying in the company. You carry olive oil. You start going around the house, speaking in tongues, casting out demons because cats cry. So the righteous is as bold as a lion. You know, many of those activities you engage in are born out of fear. They are not born out of your response to real life situations. The righteous is as bold as a lion. The righteous is as bold as a lion. The righteous is like Daniel that stands before Nebuchadnezzar and says, Oh king, <laughs> in this matter we are not careful. We don't plan what to say. It's not something we premeditate in this matter, oh king. That even if our God refused to deliver us, we are not going to bow before you. We have seen the fire. It's nothing. Take us in. We are ready. The righteous is as bold as a lion. Are you as bold as a lion? Are you as bold as a lion? If you are bold as a lion, why are you so concerned about your enemies? Imaginary enemies. Why are you so concerned? So you are as bold as a lion. Praise God. For many years, the thought of you shall take up serpents and scorpions and none shall hurt you plagued my mind on how to make that statement practical. For many years. You know, quoting scriptures is very easy. Living it out is, is a bigger problem. As a believer, you must make deliberate attempt to inculcate the value of courage. The value of courage. You must inculcate deliberate attempt. The Archbishop told us of how he woke up one day and he saw native Dr. Potts in his house, in front of his house, Izobo, in front of his house, all manner of things inside. And he told himself, a human hand brought it here. Right? So the righteous is as bold as a lion. He said, a human hand brought Izobo here. If the Izobo did not paralyze the human hand that brought it here, it cannot paralyze my hand. You know what he did? He carried the Izobo and smashed them on the ground and swept it out. The man that died was the man who brought it. He said, the righteous is as bold as a lion. Oh, come on now. You are not saying it boldly. Righteous is as bold as a lion. There are many fears we have. I've said before that fear is land. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear and faith are two sides of the same coin. Fear is faith in the rivers. That means you have faith in something that is negative. When you see a snake and you are terrified, it's because you have faith in the capacity of the snake to cause you harm. You believe in it. So you respond. You become agitated. You become afraid. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I realize that in the encounter of God, many of the Old Testament prophets, when an angel appears to them, when God appears to them, he will always use the word fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Praise God. And I've said that when God says something, take it literally. When God says, do not do this in his word, it means that there is a life, real, positive impact. If you follow that word. We may not know it all, but thank God for science. Science is revealing many of the things God says don't do. Science is revealing the benefits of not doing them and the dangers of doing them. Fear is learned. Fear is learned either by direct experience or by observing the fear in others. I've shared the story many times. Son going to the zoo with me one day and seeing one of the zookeepers carrying a python, a live python. He was just five years old then. 
He walked straight to the man and started attempting to carry the snake. So I told the zoo man, give it to him. And he gave him the snake. And my son carried the snake. You can find that picture in my Facebook page. Why? He had never learned that snakes are dangerous. He didn't know that snakes are dangerous. Praise God. So he saw someone carrying a snake in his mind. Oh, it's colorful. It looks beautiful. So he walked straight to the person to carry a snake. Now, for a child that learns that snakes are dangerous, even a rope threatens him. Even a rope. You know how some of you react when you wake up in the bed? You know, there was, uh, somebody, there was an experience I had one time where somebody raised alarm in the house. The whole house was on rampage. He said there was a snake on his bed. The whole, just imagine that. Snake on your bed. Hey, God. Hey, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Snake on your bed. When we searched, we discovered that it was a belt that has a snake head. A belt. And the whole house was on fire. Snake on the bed. Amen? Praise God. So when you are taught that snakes are dangerous, even long things, rope, will, will terrify you. So he had not been taught, so he just walked straight and picked the snake. I had to start teaching him that snakes can be dangerous. So you don't see snakes and pick. Because I was worried that he could see a cobra and attempt to pick it that way. Same way we took my dog for treatment for something somewhere in somebody's compound. And there was a Rottweiler chained. Of course, before he became big, we had a dog. So he's dogs as nice pet. A Rottweiler that sometimes demons enter them a lot was chained to a tree and my son just came down from the car and was going to grab the head of the Rottweiler. <laughs> so we quickly snapped say, come on. This dog has demons in it all. <laughs> Praise God. So fear is land. We learn it either by observing other people's experience or by our direct experience. Hallelujah. I said I will speak about different types of fear. There is the fear of death, the fear of ill health, fear of poverty or the fear of failure. There's the fear of criticism. There's the fear of loss of love of someone. The fear of old age, which is also related to the fear of death. These are many of the fears that plague our lives. For believers of this modern era, there are other fears. There are other fears. You know, a lot of people have told us in this church, we don't pray, we don't pray, we, are not, we don't like prayers. In fact, I have heard people say that Pastor Sass does not like prayers. And you know, when they say that, I just wonder, Really? Are there people that don't like prayers? Are there really human beings that don't like prayers? There's, there are people have said it, that Pastor Sass doesn't like prayers. And you know, sometimes I'm quick to remind them that I grew up a prayer warrior. It's just that now, because of knowledge, my prayers get answers faster. So, I don't exert too much energy like I used to. You know, in those days, on a weekly basis, I hold all night. Look, the kind all night I was holding is not the type that pastor calls for. My own. In my own room, on a weekly basis, I must hold that all night. You know, the thought that there are witches holding meeting in one banana tree near the house there keeps me awake for all night. <laughs> How can I be sleeping when witches are having meeting? Praise God. And you know the kind of prayers you pray when you are thinking about witches? You know those type of prayers. <laughs> you know the type of prayers you know to set you up on the crinkum crankum warfare strategic level spiritual warfare kind of prayer is very easy it's very easy I'm sure you've attended some of those churches now if I come and tell you of how as I was coming from Lagos <laughs> I will provoke your spirit right now. And you know, 
As I'm talking, saying the story, you see me. As I'm not, I'm not saying pray. I'm just telling you the stories. Have you not heard those testimonies? As the witch was going to strike me, I said, Jesus, you said the Holy Ghost, Jesus. Ah, you said the Holy Ghost is here. Praise God. Many of those things are created out of fear. They are not scriptures. They are not scriptures. So what usually do we do? We stalk fear. We instigate fear in your heart so that you'll be provoking your spirit to, in quote, pray. They'll tell you of the terrible things the devil has done. They'll tell you of how witches confess in the village that your uncle that died, they were the one that drank his blood. They'll tell you a lot of things that, that ignite your anger. And you start praying out of anger. Of course, when you are praying out of that level of anger, it is called praying in the spirit. Or wrongly anyway. Praise God. So when I come here and say, Jesus, I thank you for your love. My needs are met. All things that pertain to life and godliness you have given me that I may enjoy divinity. All things are mine. My heritage is good. You've planted me like a tree by the waters. I yield my fruit in season and out of season. I will not cast my vine before its time. All things are working together for my good. Even that situation that looks like a misfortune, I know is a blessing waiting to happen. Praise God. If I pray like that, a lot of people will feel that I have not prayed. So, fear is a major factor in many of our experience of the God life. Many of our interpretation of Christianity is born out of fear. Many of our interpretation of the Christian life on how to pray, on how to, is, born, is born out of fear. It's like a man who wants to sell drugs. What does he do? He will tell you all the dangerous things the drug will do and inside the bus. And with or without you feeling the symptom, before you know it, you are saying, bring two. Unfortunately, a lot of us, our spirituality has been ignited by stalking of our fears. Stalking of our fears. We make you afraid, so afraid, so, so afraid that you think that that is, of course, when you start praying out of fear against your enemies and against demons, against all that, and whereas if the demons that you are praying against, you know, it's easy for you to chant against demons. If the demons really appear before you, you, go, you will just run. You will just run. You know, when I was young, I used to have a lot of those experiences. Of demons appearing I don't know whether it was my mind that was playing tricks on me but I used to have many of those experiences my mom knows in fact she used to suspect that I was affiliated with some of them she used to take me to church pastor pray for this boy he's possessed he's possessed pray for him because of some of those nocturnal uh, night terrors and all those experiences so the last time I had those experiences many years ago was as if something imaginary the dark colored demon appeared and you know what i did i was lying on the couch i said okay you are there let me see what you can do that's what i said and i slept if it was in those days i will have all night casting out demons you know the all night is just to make sure i'm awake so they don't kill me when i'm sleeping <laughs> you know a lot of you are having all night not because you you really love god you want to pray but so that you'll be awake so they don't kill you before you sleep you understand a lot of you, when it's night, you become terrified. Once it's night time, you become terrified. Say so the, the righteous is as bold as a lion. When it's night, you become terrified. Night has come again because of insomnia and all that. Hallelujah. Praise God. And nothing be terrified by the adversary, which to them a token of defeat. The fear of failure and the fear of poverty... Riches and poverty are opposite ends. The roads that lead to them travel in opposite direction. The fear of poverty leads to poverty. The fear of poverty leads to poverty. You are a slave to what you fear. Many have erroneously believed 
that the fear of poverty may be an impetus to the pursuit of riches. But I think that the reverse is the case. As the fear of a thing brings you into slavery to that thing. Is that correct? The fear of a thing makes you a slave to it. To work in genuine victory, you must overcome your fear of poverty or your fear of failure and aspire to enjoy the joys that riches bring. Some of the things that bring the fear of poverty and failure is your belief system. There are many of us here who believe that when you are rich, you, you will not be a good Christian. If you have that kind of belief, you can never be rich. And how do you know you have those kind of belief? Every successful man that crosses your path, you have a criticism for them. You know that they are doing illegal business. That's why they are rich. Because in your mind, you so fear wealth, and you believe that there is no way under the sun you can be rich working hard. So when you see anyone that is successful, you suspect that they are doing the wrong thing. So the fear of poverty could also be interpreted as a reverence for poverty and is many times a product of wrong beliefs. To kill your fear of poverty, you must review your beliefs about poverty. Hallelujah. What are the evidence of the fear of poverty? Indifference expressed through lack of ambition, willingness to tolerate poverty, acceptance of whatever compensation life might bring without protest, Mental and physical laziness, lack of initiative, imagination, enthusiasm, and self-control. These are evidence of fear of poverty. Indecision. Staying in the fence. You don't want to fail. You don't want, if I take this one, now I fail. If I take, you are afraid to just take decisions. Doubt. Express true ex excuses. Designed to cover up, explain away, apologize for one's failures. Sometimes express in the form of envy of those who are successful. Or criticizing them. You worry a lot. Expressed by finding fault with others. Scowling and frowning. Intemperance. Addiction. Lack of poise. Self-consciousness. These are all evidence of the fear of failure. These are all evidence of the fear of failure. Overconsciousness. Looking for the negative side of every circumstance. Thinking, of, thinking and talking of possible failures. Instead of focusing on success. Waiting for the right time, like the man that says there's a lion without, so if I go and plant, the lion will consume me. Hallelujah. Remembering those who have failed and forgetting those who have succeeded. Undue pessimism. Procrastination. The habit of putting off until tomorrow that which can be done today. Refusal to accept responsibility. Willingness to compromise rather than put up a good fight. Bargaining with life for a penny instead of demanding... Prosperity reaches. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's my privilege and my pleasure to invite you to be a part of our service in House of Grace Benin, where we liberate people from the bondage of religion to the gospel of grace that we preach. House of Grace Benin is an arm of Church of God Mission. We are located at number two Otubu Crescent, off Ago, off Ekenwa Road, Benin City. We believe that the biggest miracle to happen to any human being is the miracle of self-discovery. And self-discovery only comes by the realization of the truth. When you visit us in House of Grace Benin, you will discover the truth for yourself and your life will not be the same. Our meeting time is 8 a.m. on Sunday morning and 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you. God bless you.